I've clicked onto the Global Tropical RB for December the 6th, 2023. As is always the case in these videos, the Thotix pressure are mine alone, and when making decisions ahead of any tropical cyclones, look to your local weather office, local emergency management, and local tropical cyclone warning center. So it's been a few days since my last video, and we have had a lot change. Uh, the system in the Bay of Miguel has made landfall in India. We're not going to be talking about that today. Today we're primarily focusing on tropical cyclone Jasper here in the South Pacific and Australian region. You can see it here on your screen just to orient yourself a little bit. These are the Vanuatu Islands. These are the Solomon Islands. This is Papua New Guinea here. And this is the coastline of Queensland and Australia. So the system since my last video has tracked through now the Papua New Guinea Islands and now is developing at what looks to be a pretty good rate. Uh, you can see just in this imagery over the past several hours, we've had now a banding eye feature develop on satellite. And it definitely looks like the system is uh, getting close to cyclone intensity already. And it makes sense. The environment is pretty favorable here. Uh, the waters are very warm, and I'll show you that in a little bit. And we also have a low shear environment. You can see all of this outflow expanding away from the storm, particularly in the south. And I can show you this in the tuna millibar flow plot on the GFS where you can see there's the storm uh, west of the Papua New Guinea Islands, and that outflow is now moving away pretty fast uh, aloft away from the storm. And this is making that low shear environment. Now, these are a couple microwave passes that we got earlier in the day. You can see we had a, a less organized structure than we do have now. You can see all this uh, banding convection wrapping around the center. And you can see this is a one about an hour after this one. It started to get a little bit better organized. We had more banding uh, starting to take the shape of an eye wall to develop this eye. And it does look like this is the... Uh, zoomed in infrared loop it looks like we've had that convection come in on the southwest side a bit more and we're starting to get that closed off and gut ourselves an eye uh, fully developed here and once that eye develops and once the inner core is formidable at that point it does look like the storm has the conditions to go intensify into uh, what likely will be a strong tropical cyclone here uh, you can see on the h wharf model, we have a lot of warm sea surface temperatures ahead of the storm. Now, they do cool off quite quickly as you go south, as it is still the early part of the season. And we don't usually uh, have uh, warm waters down, say, the more central coast of Queensland and New Caledonia this time of year. We typically look for... Now they're around January, February, and March, around peak season before we can actually get sea surface temperatures that warm down there. But as it stands right now, it has a lot of warm sea surface temperatures to work with, and this will be tracking a bit southwest, so it might actually have a little bit more warm water to work with here. You can see there's this little tongue of increased sea surface temperatures where the storm is going to track, so that might allow it to stay pretty strong as it gets farther south. And the intensity is important because things have changed over the past several days. We have now gotten more confidence, and the models have uh, shown that there is more likely of a, of a chance that this system comes towards Australia eventually within its track. Uh, this is a GFS 500 millibar plot, and this is a run from several days ago. It is a, December the 6th now, so this is about three days old and I'm showing you this because I want to show you how the pattern has changed on the GFS and how it has trended over the past couple of days so you can see in this run primarily focus here in between New Zealand and Australia where we have a trough here on the model this in this scenario which which is where this model would have showed the system would have just went out to sea as this trough picked it up uh, east of Australia. And in, in these model runs, we had the system avoiding Australia completely. Maybe some, you know, side impacts of the system got a bit close, but we didn't have any direct landfalls taking place because this trough was here. But what has changed is we've had a different pattern taking shape entirely. We've had, we've gone from a trough to a ridge, and I can show you that if we go f into future runs. You can see still a bit of a trough pattern here on this run and then it completely flips 
in a different run. We have a ridge here and now this upper level low over Australia. And this pattern has generally been consistent on the GFS since then. You can see this ridge has trended stronger and there have been some uncertainties on exactly where the ridge has been placed as this has been several days out. But you can see it's now starting to get more in line of an idea of what the model wants. You can see that now in the most recent runs, we've started to see the storm on, on its runs. This is the run, or sorry, this is a storm for reference. You can see now that the storm is not moving around as much as it was in earlier runs. In today's runs particularly, we've been pretty consistent on having a storm come into the central coast of Queensland on the run. This ridge has also been much more consistent. Uh, you'll, you'll notice that as I was scrolling through those, the ridge was changing positions ever so slightly. But now the GFS is getting more and more in line with this idea of this ridge being in a certain place, and that gives us more confidence in the track. And this is, of course, not good news because now this is a pretty solid idea, at least on the GFS's end, saying that we might have a tropical cyclone come into Queensland. Unfortunately, the GFS is not alone in this idea. This is a European model, and you can see it has also trended into a similar pattern that the GFS shows. And you can see this ridge has formed on the run, and we also have this upper level low here. And these two features are going to work to try and pull the system in. Now, there are still some subtle differences here. You'll note that the GFS is pretty much in the same place as the European is in, but the European is much slower. This is on Sunday morning, and this is on uh, Monday morning on the European. So there is a little bit of difference in the flow loft, and I can show you that here on the European. If I look at a sounding from the system or from the model, and you can see uh, there's some easterly flow in the low levels. Now, I, th I think I'm a little bit too late in this run to show this, but I can show you the tuna millibar flow from a little bit earlier. Yeah, this is Sunday morning. The reason it's slower is by this time, the storm is still of, uh, still of some significant strength. It is, I believe, over the 26 degree isotherm by this point, so it's able to sustain some form of intensity. But you can see with that easterly flow towards the surface from the ridge in, in between New Zealand and and Australia, this is going to try and, of course, push a storm towards Australia. But aloft, we have westerly flow. And actually, I think this is the one where I needed to get a sounding from. Uh, and yes, it was. You can see the easterly flow here and the westerly flow here. And these flows are going to cancel each other out. So the storm does not really move too much. It sort of just drips westwards on this run. And we have a slower storm. Now, the good news is in this case, and this would be... Uh, same is signifying to hope for the European solution here is the flows here di diverting from you know the westerly wind aloft to the easterly winds of the surface causes a significant shearing. And this does cause the system to weaken to where you can see by landfall, we have a very weak, well, maybe not very weak, but a weaker tropical cyclone making landfall. It, uh, it has more room to weaken. Uh, as it comes ashore. While on the GFS, we have a bit of a stronger storm coming in, which could still be of cyclone strength, maybe a bit stronger, maybe into upper categories of the cyclone scale. So that's some of the uncertainty that we have now. Uh, but in general, we have a track confidence of exactly where the storm may try to go. You can see while the European and the GFS are disagreeing on timing, we are more honed in onto this portion of the coastline in Queensland. Now, of course, things may change uh, and there may be differing tracks. Uh, the GFS over the past several days has had differing tracks going from, you know, all the way to Brisbane down south, all the way to northern Queensland. That's a very large spread, but it does seem like today we are getting a bit more confidence in that. Now, I'm going to quickly bring up the Bureau of Meteorology forecast. I forgot to open it, but this serves as a good opportunity for me to tell you where to go when you want to look for this forecast cone. So what you want to do is you want to go to the link I've left in the description to the Bureau of Meteorology, and they will have a link here that says Tropical Cyclone at the top. You click this and you will get all the advisory information. Uh, eventually when it loads, you can see their Tropical Cyclone uh, forecast map here, and you can see and uh, scroll through their general track. And you can see the general track that I talked about between 
the European and the GFS today coming in around this portion of Queensland from, say, around Cooktown to McKay. Uh, now, of course, like I said, things may change. And I do, I'm not completely familiar with, uh, with these, uh, this new website. They did change it from last season. I'm going to quickly see if I can find a forecast cone from the Bureau of Meteorology so you can get more of a sense of the timing on this but i don't know where exactly to find that and i can't looking on other sources as well um but i can't seem to find their forecast cone but we can go off of the forecast here and you can tell exactly where the storm is going to go and you can sort of get a sense of the track uncertainty that exists here uh, so make sure you stay tuned to the Bureau of Meteorology I'll see if I can find a forecast cone for the next video I'll try and have one out tomorrow to get an update on exactly how strong the storm is if anything has changed within the track we'll see if that has taken place tomorrow but definitely looks like a more significant event here and of course like I said with other storms earlier this year, this is the opportunity that you have to prepare ahead of time. Take this time to get your cyclone preparedness kit ready, not just for Jasper, but also for future systems that may come your way. We are looking towards a very active South Pacific cyclone season, and even though that is not the Australian region, keep in mind that you can have storms that form in this basin come your way and we've certainly had big storms in the past do that and they can certainly cause a significant uh, issue for anyone along this coast furthermore this part of the coastline really has not had a lot of big cyclones over the past several years mostly over the past few years we've had storms kept to western australia but this may be a year where we see a little bit more activity in the east just based on the more activity that we see in the south pacific uh, but Again, I will leave a link to this website in the description. I'll probably actually just leave a link to the Cyclone page, so it will take you directly to this, and then you can just look at it. Uh, and remember to scroll ahead, and you can see exactly where the track uncertainty is uh, for that select day, and you can see through Tuesday coming into Queensland, Australia. There. So stay safe in Australia as the system comes your way. Make sure you're prepared and stay safe in Papua New Guinea as the system is still bringing some impacts there. And I'll have future uploads later this week on the storm as it develops. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching.